Oh my! Oh my! Oh! Michael Cole has been the voice of the WWE, and he is the voice of the WWE, just his deal with it for the better part of 10 years. He's attracted a lot of fan ire over the years, some unfairly, some very, very, very fairly. But you know what? On the few occasions he's been given slightly freer reign on commentary without a million producers in his ears, like a swarm of bees who don't think you know how to download an app, when he can just do his job like a beast in the East or the UK Championship Tournament, you know what? Michael Cole is good at his job, eat it dorks. That being said, most of his career has not exactly been vintage. I'm Plumpy from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 things WWE want you to forget about Michael Cole. Number 10, Heidenreich. Well, we'll start nice and strong, shall we? Heidenreich, the failed experiment of what would happen if you take Jeff Jarrett and inject him with venom for 15 years. He went through a poetry stage in 2004. No, really, he started writing poems, and let's just say he puts the verse in perverse because he sodomized Michael Cole against the wall against his will. Why? Why did this happen? Because, and I wish I was kidding, apparently it came to Vince McMahon in a dream, and he thought it would be funny. Not sure why anyone would dream of Michael Cole having sex. I think I'd rather dream of all my pets dying, but... There we go. Number nine, his tats. There are a lot of bad wrestler tattoos in this world. The bull on Kevin Owens' arm that looks like it was drawn on in Sharpie. That herpes ring around Batista's belly button. Whatever Mr. Kennedy had on his shoulders, it looked more like a bad burn than sick ink. Anyway, since he has wrestled some matches, and we'll get to them, Michael Cole's tattoos count as wrestler tattoos, and oh my f***. Doctor, they are dog terrible. First of all, you've got the tat on his arm that reads two hearts are better than one, there isn't enough vomit in the world, but the best is the crazy conjoined twin face on his back. Look at that. That's terrifying. Why would you need faces on your back? other than, presumably, to watch out for Heidenreich. Number eight, he couldn't get JR booed. Good old JR has pretty much been always exactly that. Good old JR, with his dry wit, effortless delivery, and simply being the best there is at what he does. Jim Ross has been faced for 95% of his time in WWE. But believe it or not, there was a period back in the 90s where they turned him bad old JR. They actually tried two times, once in 1996 when he did heal things like a work shoot on WWF when he made loads of really good points about how crap they were, and again in 1999 when he returned after several months away following an attack of Bell's palsy. Michael Cole had been on Raw filling in for him, and when JR returned, they packaged him as a bitter heel, jealous of Cole. That makes sense, I guess. He then kicked him square in the Michaels and took his position on commentary. See, a good heel requires a good face to go up against. Problem was, people didn't really like Michael Cole as much as they did JR. So when the Oklahoma native cut a vicious promo on him, humped him in the walnuts, and then announced he was going back to work, the crowd burst into loud cheers and applause. Sorry, Michael. Sorry, friend. Number seven, bringing back Brian Christopher. You might expect me to put the entire Michael Cole heel turn on here. That difficult time for everyone when Maggle went naughty boy, fell deeply in love with The Miz and just generally would not shut the f*** up. Thing is, the heel turn in terms of producing palpable hate worked gangbusters. He was the most dislikable man in the world. It's just a shame he was on commentary constantly. He did genuinely good healing like dress up as Jim Ross, the whole coal mine shtick, the bubble wrap stuff was funny, even the horribly exploitative stuff about Jerry the King Lawler's mother with Cole making light of her death literally a week after she passed, even that drew massive heat. What did not was when Cole brought back Lawler's son, aka Grandmaster Sexay, to rag on his pop. It's one of the most excruciatingly awkward segments WWE have ever produced. No one remembered who Grandmaster Sexay was and reacted in horrible, bum-clenching silence to the entire heatless debacle. It's so bad, so very bad. Although someone has done an edit where he returns to a huge pop and you should watch that, it's funny. Number six, winning at Mania. So the whole point of the Lawler Cole affair was to blow off at WrestleMania. Cole would be an irritating little goddamn bastard weasel asshole bastard for months, escaping a sound beating at every turn. But at Mania, in Jerry's first and only match at the event, despite his years with the company, Cole would have nowhere to run, Jerry would win, everyone would be happy, right? Ha ha ha, no, dear me no. No. WWE wanted to spin the feud out for two more goddamn bastard months, so there was a dusty finish. Lawler appeared to win as everyone wanted, but that decision was reversed by the anonymous Raw general manager awarding the DQ win to Cole Utter Bollocks. With such a slap in the face, the angle was broken, the two more pay-per-view matches in the feud stank, and now many fans, perhaps unfairly, look back on the whole feud as one big disaster. Number five, implying Vince sucks on WWE.com. <laughs> he does a bit. One of the big issues that fans seem to have with Mickey is that he's a 
mouthpiece for Vince McMahon's more on the nose corporate spin. Whether it's shilling the app, badly parroting corny sound bites, or spearheading all of WWE's social media hashtag engagement, Cole seems like a company man through and through, which is why it's somewhat nice that he publicly ripped on the boss at least once. In 2006, he was made managing editor of WWE.com, which evidently Vinnie the Pooh was unhappy with as he ordered an overhaul. Cole issued a public statement online saying, So in summary, the website does suck compared to where we're going to take it, but it won't suck for long. Wish I could say the same for the boss. Hot fire, Michael, hot fire. Now, it's incredibly unlikely this little bit of sass wasn't vetted by three executives and Vince himself. After all, Michael would never actually talk back to Vinnie Mac right. Number four, talking back to Vinnie Mac. Now this one is genuine and we know that because it was leaked. A live broadcast of wrestling is a chaotic affair. Trust us, we know. Directors are talking to commentators, cameramen, technicians, everyone's talking to everyone over the headsets. In the breaks, while the cameras are still rolling but not broadcasting, commentary gets an opportunity to actually speak their minds. This occasionally gets leaked. One time, Cole was caught off broadcast ragging on fans for doing a CM Punk chant. That's pretty bad. Another audio leak catches Cole pushing back against Vince for constantly plugging the price of the network. This is what he says. Do you want me to say that every time? Because I've said it a load of times tonight. Then we hear silence for like a long time, during which we can imagine that Vince was calmly and thoroughly explaining to Cole how he's going to rehire Heidenreich and make him Maggle's new broadcast partner before Cole humbly says, yes sir, yes sir. Okay, I've got it, sir. Number three, five-time worst announcer of the year. Everyone likes awards, right? Michael Cole does, considering after winning his slammies, he had them surgically grafted to his f***ing hands. M. Cosm might be a little less proud of these plaudits, though. The Wrestling Observer, which is probably the most esteemed wrestling mag in the business, has yearly awards. One of those awards is worst television announcer of the year. Michael Cole has won this award five times. He won it four years in a row from 2009 to 2012. That is not something for the CV. Number two, dropping F-bombs. Everyone goes a little crazy sometimes and roly-poly coley, he's not exempt from that. Michael has had to put up with an avalanche of crap over the years from wrestling fans, but when he appeared on the Howard Stern Show, he finally unleashed some abuse of his own. When a fan informed him he didn't like Mike, Cole says, listen, f head, you can turn the goddamn channel for all I care. What the f are you doing? What the f are you doing? I like this Michael Cole. I would listen to that for three hours a week. And number one, he spoiled the main event of WrestleMania 15. That is not a good day at the office to accidentally give away the results of the biggest match on the biggest show of the year. Put that in the whoopsie column. As we've already mentioned, JR suffered an attack of Bell's palsy in December 1998 and was away for months, but he returned to call the main event of Mania 15. The rest of the show was called by King and Cole. King Cole, haha, <laughs> I love it. During the broadcast, before the main event, Maggle accidentally said that post-show, fans would be able to tune into the Home Shopping Network where they get a chance to hear from the new WWF champion. Oh dear Cole, that's a bad Cole. But sometimes he's good. Sometimes.